Hello, it's me, Chajolita, and I am currently in Ghana at Kwame Nkrumah Museum. Thank you so much, Ghana, for accepting me. Mwah. See ya. A goat will always give birth to a goat. So she's a reflection of the reality back at home. Mm, because I realize that some people don't have problem with crime. They have problem with who commit the crime. I came here to Hozu. So last week, uh, when I met Damilola, I met her on Sunday. So I approached her, I talked to her, I collected her phone number. So we started chatting. Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new, thank you for coming. My name is Lillian and to all of you that are returning subscribers, thank you so much for always coming back. Don't forget to subscribe if you have not. And of course, do wait to like this video. I didn't want to do this video because so many people have already done it and still doing it. I feel like, okay, already so many Nigerians have given their opinion, those that are taking side with Javis which I'm glad not many Nigerians are taking side with her, especially on the YouTube space. I'm glad to see that so many Nigerians are not happy with her. They are condemning her for what she said. And of course, the Ghanaian Gen Z's are not sleeping like before, when they would just sit down and keep quiet and allow me to do the fighting. So I'm glad to see that all of these things have changed. The Ghanaian Gen Z's are not sleeping on this one especially. They are giving it to Javis Woto Woto. All the home training that her mama forgot to give her, she have received it by force. So I didn't want to talk about her. But then uh, the reason I want to talk about Javis in this video is because of the trend that is going on back home in my country, Nigeria, where you see a lot of ritual killings going on, especially by young men who want to make money at all costs. And for a minute, I want to be their lawyer. All right. I want to be their lawyer for one minute. I'm not and I will never support and act like that there is no excuse that is valid enough for you to take another human life or defraud other people because you want to make money so don't get me wrong as i want to be their lawyer so at the cost of being their lawyer i mean the ritualist guys lawyer for a few minutes do not misunderstand me but let's look at it this way too let's say i'm their lawyer because they have right to be defended in court for instance have you thought about the pressure being mounted on a, a regular nigerian young man in nigeria by nigerians especially some young nigerian girls and you wake up every day you see videos like this I have displayed them i don't know if i'll be able to display them in this video you see cases of oh this girl was murdered here this one was used for ritual this one the guy bushard her this 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 a headless body of a girl or a girl who ran mat being used by yahoo boy for ritual peoples the list is long dear sisters sometimes have you thought about the pressure that our ladies are putting on the men can you just see how javis behaved and if i want to tell you the truth 60 percent of nigerian girls are like that ka 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 ska material money money wealth 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 that is their dream man regardless of how this man makes this money they care very less <sighs> she's saying ghana is a village which i didn't see we are going to take a look at some part of the videos of Javis that I could get. I think we should do that before I even go on to give more of my opinion so that you guys will know that it's not even young women alone that in that act that are doing that. Last year, was it last year? There is a wealthy Nigerian woman that came to Ghana and and because I know she was in Ghana, so I dropped a message at the comment section of her post announcing her presence in Ghana. I mean, like she DM'd me on Instagram. We got talking. Let's take a look at Javi's video first. Some of her videos. Then I'll come back to talk about that woman and also continue to make case for the ritual killers. Not because I support them. But maybe at the end of the day, you will see why these guys are thriving, why the business is thriving. You see, they kid this one today, another one will stay for victim. 
let's take a look at whatever some of the things i could find about javis that irritates me to the bone marrow as a human being not as a nigerian because i am their biggest victim here i am a victim being nigerian and a good one with good character makes me the victim let's watch this together okay we not started the, not the cup yes. the cup is small What do you want to do? Calm down, man. I can buy food. Let me go and drop. Oh, an apple. Let me see. You don't like an apple? I'm not. I never. No, they have a lot of food here. Yeah. Oh, the one that that beauty girl that is chopped that is like a malaska. Yeah, yeah. I'm going there. <laughs> this is our 400 kg money, man. So let's see what 400 kg will do for us in Ghana. Well, I hope you are enjoying Ghana. That's right. Okay, we've not started enjoying Ghana. The cup, the cup is small. The cup is small. You are hungry. Ah. I'm hungry. Oh. <laughs> ah, you will not count your money. I don't understand the count. No, this, that's that two hundred dollar is three thousand. Uh, three thousand what? Three thousand one forty dollars. So that is like that is like three hundred and seventy k in Nigeria. Three hundred and seventy k that more than this. Yes, no. That's why I like Nigeria. And you go here, you will be feeling big. This is not easy. Is that calculated? Count it. All right, thank you very much. Let's go. We we'll record this. The what? The what is it? Cup. <laughs> the, is it cap or cup? You say it's cup. Eh? Cup. Cup. Are you you people say cup? It's cup. It's cup. It's not cup. It's a cup. I eh? want a pasta. <laughs> Do you have pasta? Yes, please. No, not pasta. 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 That was a prayer. <laughs> Not, not pasta. They don't call it pasta. It's not pasta. What, what, do, you, what do you call it? So what do you call your pasta? Pasta. Pasta. Yeah. Why are you say pasta? So what do you if you call pasta? Pasta. Then what do you call pasta? Which one are you talking about? Pasta. 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 Food. Pasta. Pasta food. Pasta. Okay. Pasta. Okay. Pasta. 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 Do you want to eat pasta? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hello, Mox. I'm here. Let us activate. <laughs> I look pretty, right? It's your upgraded AI. Hey, which one again? I told you, but it's only I came. I'm not seeing Benz. Angie, okay. Honda. It's only Honda. Yeah, Honda. Kia. Kia. Eh, hey, which one again? Williams. Another car again. Williams. Na Honda. Okay, na Honda. Yeah. You see, the, the car thing that Javi said is not even accepting me as much as what they are doing to the lady that is supposed to serve them at the restaurant. Now that one, they pay me pass. Like if I'm there, I won't lie to you. You people already, some of you already know me as a problematic person person i'm not a violent person but i would have tell her things eh? i would say things to her that will make her think about her life for a minute that is the part that irritates me in all of this the most the car aspect of her is it shouldn't be a surprise to ghanaians i don't know why some people are shocked <laughs> hey, hey, hey javi you don't know she's nigerian again she's my sister she's nigerian that is how we are Materia, materia, and it's not just the young people, a lot of the adults are doing it. So, and why I'm doing this is, of course, let's take a look at this video first before I tell you guys about the rich Nigerian woman that came to Ghana that I met. Let's watch this first. I came here to Hozu, so last week, uh, when I met Damilola, I met her on Sunday. 
so i approached her i talked to her i collected her phone number so we started chatting so she told me i eventually asked her if she meet up so she told me that she's very busy she has exam so i told her whenever she's free she should let me know so last week wednesday it was thursday wednesday thursday she told me that yeah she's free she, does, she doesn't have exam on wednesday so I already planned this that I already had it on mind that I'm going to use them in order so I bought codeine and ritual so I bought codeine and sprite and mixed it up so I gave it to her because I, I, I first drank it so that it let it not look like I mixed something inside so I gave it to her and she drank so I told her she, uh, she we, we met at uh, NMPC Philele facing the gas station so i told her she should follow me so that we should go over to my place so when i get close to my house where i live there was an uncompleted building so we kneeled on the wall we were just talking so gradually gradually she's feeling weak gradually so that is um jeremiah a young nigerian who used another young nigerian girl for money ritual or i would say wanted to use already because he didn't succeed at this point now is is with the police because already he looks like someone from a poor family he looks like a newbie he has not made the money that will help him to get out of the police net so he's going to go this one's now justice for damilola damilola will get justice so when this guy killed damilola he did not just finish there he took the organs that he need and we bid it to the witch doctor just as instructed mm. but jeremiah did not stop there jeremiah went on to demanding ransom from the family of damilola the guy that he already unalived the family kept on giving they kept on giving they just kept on giving even though they do not have much they kept on giving until they got tired of giving and decided to try their luck by informing the police and like i said earlier jeremiah has not made money so this one here for police to get him it's like this and nobody is coming to save him because he's a newbie in the business and he looks like someone from a poor family so you see the pressure mounted on the young men my heart goes out to girls like damilola because jeremiah does not even have a car because he's just coming up he's an upcoming big boy right so she's gonna be the process she's gonna be she's gonna be his stepping stone to world and when he makes that money guess what jeremiah will do first jeremiah will buy a car because that defines success in my country once he buys a car he will from hotel to hotels pick up different girls he will use the ones as um, they will instruct him to do he will continue because he need to keep up with it he need to keep up with the rich lifestyle and here we are surprised that javis is doing this this is it okay so this is me making a case for some yahoo boys i mean this ritual killings i do not and i will never support it there is no reason there should never be any reason why you would unalive another person to make money for yourself or defraud other people i'm done making case for the yahoo boys even if i do as their lawyer i still say okay my lord please they are guilty now let's talk about the rich woman i told you guys of so you know, she gave me her address i went to meet her at one of the biggest hotels in ghana in accra precisely you guys i got there when i got to the hotel she told me to wait for her at the reception she's getting ready she's coming down i said okay i waited for this woman patiently for more than an hour finally she came down with her pa and when she saw me she was surprised that i don't have a pa and i only have camera and a tripod and i'm carrying these things where is your car i could see that shock so while i was trying to set my camera to get the perfect angle so she could come and join me then we do the interview she and her pa were laughing i could hear them laughing gossiping and laughing because the girl is not from her tribe so they couldn't use a language i didn't understand they were talking about you know which kind youtuber be this they are shocked to see someone that do not have a car someone that do not have a pa wanting to interview her <laughs> so normally i am supposed to show up there with a car maybe a range rover 
with one or two persons working for me, sitting and crossing my leg. I will sit down and cross my legs and I will basically order people to do things for me. I will just add rich and I'll wear some of the best hair. And of course, I will wear top clothing and I will smell like a bag of money. She would have respected me. But this particular woman has a mix of something. There's something about her. Even in all of those looking down on me, she could see that I am unshakable. After the interview, I am supposed to carry my bag, my camera, my tripod and go right but because she could see that i can easily be used she decided to oh please help us pack the hair and i agreed i help carried her goose to her room i was even saying this hotel is expensive and why don't you go for why not you go for an average hotel like so that you will spend less oh she was like oh no no she you know i'm like okay i understand i mind my business when we got to the room she said her staffs are coming the girls that will help her out, the guys, and they're about, I think she said 10 or 18 of them are coming, or 12 of them are coming, and she need a place that they will stay. She's not going to keep them in that hotel. Typical Nigerian way of treating our staffs. That typical Nigerian way of treating the people under you. So they will always be reminded that they are less, they are below you. So she needed a place lower than where she is, like a lot low, like very low, super deep, deep low, so that they will lodge. And then she told me to try and get her a place. So I went on to, was it, I went to gg.com. I did some bookings. I told her, oh, this area, see the price. It's cheaper here, it's cheaper here. And I tried to, so because she does not know the city right because i know the city i was telling her oh here yeah. from here to where the business will be taking place on that day this is the distance and this is the, the distance right so she told me okay i should book somewhere around the west hill mall area right so behind the west hill mall there is this beautiful airbnb she woke me up in the morning that's when i after i've left and go home very early she called me to go there and make bookings i went there to see the place i videoed it I even make like a, a live call showing her the whole environment and I told her the road to the place is a little rough and I organized so many things for her. I booked the whole place. This Airbnb is beautiful, right? I mean, shortlet rather. This, the shortlet apartment is beautiful. I, I showed her everything and she was like, okay, this is good. And we went on to book almost the whole building right and normally i'm supposed to deposit some money before they get there for that place to be preserved for them but because the man believed me when i told him don't worry when they come they'll pay all right i was going to use my money to secure there because it was about around the time of school fees and i already have some money on me that we used to pay school fees so i wanted to quickly use some of it and secure that place but something in me just said don't worry and so when i tried to convince the owner of the place and it was cool it was okay with the idea of keeping the place for them without deposit that was what saved me uh, my money would have lost my kids school fees would have for don't go so upon arrival that so the day that these people were to come they got this one now is not the woman's staffs right this one now is her friend that is also coming with goose right so she called me oh where are you um i'm at the airport i even spoke with the driver directing the driver take this woman to where the airbnb is now her staffs are coming the following day right but her friend who is also going to sell at the fair i was even calling the short let apartments letting them know hoping that the place is in shape already it has been cleaned as promised and the man said everything is ready two hour one hour three hour four hours i didn't hear from this woman so i called i put a call through to the owner of the short let asking him if the woman and her kids have arrived and he said oh no i waited for her to call me and tell me something i didn't hear from her by this time already she does not have a phone number right so i i, I don't know i didn't know how to reach her right the taxi man phone number that she used to call me when i tried to call it wasn't going so i started to panic but with a lot of i was like 
thank God, na Ghana with the bad, it bad, it bad, maybe in a network, right? So much, much later, I went online to see if I can get her through WhatsApp. Luckily for me, I got her through WhatsApp and I asked her, sis, waiting they have on my alpha. I didn't hear from you and the Airbnb people said you are not there. Are you okay? Oh, she was like, ah, my dear. Please, Ghana is a ghetto. It's a total ghetto. This place is what? I cannot let my kids stay there. I cannot let my kids. Oh my God, Ghana is a ghetto, my dear. Ah, the whole place is so wow. This woman did not get to the short let, all right? So she was around that Teteku as is, right? And she started to make judgment. And then she told the driver to turn back and go back. So they went to East Legon or Cantonment, something like that. And so she went to some of the biggest, you know, join her. I think she went to join her friend. That's the wealthy businesswoman. She went to join her. They were there together. Okay, all you needed to have done is to tell me, I don't like that place. I don't like the road to the place or something. That was how she put it. Ghana is a ghetto. If I tell you what happened to me, okay, the staffs now came to Ghana. Where the Airbnb man, I mean, the short let apartment is still waiting. Do you know that the staffs didn't go there? The woman staffs, like the wealthy woman staffs didn't go there. They didn't see any need for them to tell me, oh, we have a change of mind. They just blacklist me like that. I didn't talk. I'm not happy for her that Ghanaian women came through and dragged her and refused her access to selling anything on that day. I made a video here. You know the woman I'm talking about. A lot of things happen. I would have lost so much money and I wouldn't have gotten it back. And on that day, Ghana herself, Mother Ghana chased her, chased all of them out. They did not make any sales. They did not sell. The Mokola women said never. They won't sell and they didn't. So the reason for this story is um, not necessary to some people. But I'm letting you know that it's not only Javis. A lot of Nigerians think like that. Her own now is out there because she said it in public. The reason Javis is trending is because she is in the public and she said this in public. And I mean, she has about 3 million followers plus on TikTok. That's uh, quite a lot of numbers and it's easy for people to see and hear whatever you're saying to understand so that is why her own is training she's not the only one there are so many people some of us silently we have fight and we are tired because they tell you that's more you know that this uh, so i don't know why people are acting surprised she's not the only one basically it's a natural thing with some nigerians it's a natural thing for them to see other countries as being below them i made a tweet here on my community tab i think yesterday of the day i'm filming this video i don't know when this video will be up i made that tweet talking about i was reacting to a youtuber a fellow youtuber's video who also does content around ghana belittling other nigerians other nigerian youtubers that particular youtuber said i'm not hungry i'm not like other youtubers that will Put Nigeria down to make Ghanaians happy. That YouTuber said so many things, right? That didn't sit down well with me. And this is someone that already we know. Some of us we know. You understand? There are so many things that we know. And the person went on to say how much is on YouTube, like that she will come and put her country down to make Ghanaians happy. She belittled, she talked down on people that are earning a living through YouTube. And we are talking about someone that is living off the proceeds of Yahoo Yahoo. So you can see, uh, they come on here, flaunt the world, everybody show off. I don't have issues with that. You're living off the proceeds from Yahoo, Yahoo money, right? It's not a problem. But I have a problem when you think it's okay to come down and belittle those that are working and making legitimate income. If you two pays me $10 a day, for instance, or $2 a day, for instance, I cherish it more i appreciate that money more than money made from defrauding other people of their hard-earned money to enrich yourself <sighs> i don't have a problem with what people do with their lives but where i have a problem is where you come to talk down on others just like javis javis a goat will always give birth to a goat so she's a reflection of the reality back at home the pressure is there you see how some of them will always some of them will tell me eh she's doing because she's surviving through youtube is it not better for me than to go and do olosho or to go and defraud other people i'm a very intelligent person who i can you see someone like me i'm very smart if i want to go into not the nigerian smart i'm very intelligent i can actually trick you if i want to but i don't want to do that 
So if I put all of this energy that I'm using to create my content, put it into trying to defraud others, imagine what will happen. I will do exploits. <laughs> I will do wonders because I get the sense. I get sense, not be mouth. Like, I'm like that. Yeah, but I'd rather use all of that into creating something for myself to feed myself from rather than leave off proceed of Yahoo Yahoo. So that was why I tweeted that tweet. Like, because a lot of people reached out to me, oh, Lily, please, oh, everybody will start thinking you are problematic. I said, okay, I don't care. Because I realize that some people don't have problem with crime. They have problem with who commit the crime. Because if you have problem with crime, you are going to be fighting so many people. Because, I mean, people that are doing those things. So if I tell you that I do not like people belittling me or belittling others, and then you, you come, you belittle because you are someone special or you are someone's favorite i drag you they will sound problematic but they expect me to drag someone that they have issues with so these are the issues javis is a reflection of the reality in nigeria i hope you guys understand so that is how it is money 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 for me i have always stated it here if you have any problem with any nigerian youtuber in ghana call their names so that you will save others the stress because if you throw shade and that shade kind of hits me by the time i come back i wouldn't know you're not talking to me i might just give it to you raw as it is because of course why not i can do it you also will go go police i go get lawyer and I go, we'll go to court. Yeah, if you want to sue me for character assassination, we'll go to court. I don't mind. I'll go to court. Otherwise, if you have any issues with any Nigerian on YouTube, just call the person's name. And if you don't have the ball to mention their name, then shut up. It means you are not man or woman enough. Shut the fuck. It's simple as that. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. So I'm not saying you should forgive Javis. Don't forgive her or drag her as you want because that is how she was raised. And here I am saying Southerners are different. Southerners are different, but Southerners, some Southerners are raising their kids in a way that is disgraceful. That is not the character of a Naja Dayton. We don't behave like that. I'm done with this video. I'll see you guys in my next one. Toodoo.